All right, welcome. I'm Dr. J, and today we're going to talk about installing R and R Studio. I hope you're here because you are extremely interested in learning about the R ecosystem. You want to be able to make incredible graphics, to perform sophisticated statistical analyses, and to build interactive websites. If you're interested in R, then this is the place to get started. While there are options out there for running R on, say, a website, it's extremely easy to install R on our most common operating systems, on a Windows system, a Mac system, and in a Linux system. So I encourage you, just go ahead, install R. It'll take a couple of seconds, uh, and then you can get started in your exploration of the R ecosystem. Let's get to it. All right. To install R, the first step is to go to the R homepage. The R homepage is located at R dash project.org. When you get to this website, uh, you'll see a very utilitarian website, no fancy animations or anything of that sort. And just as a reminder, R is an open source free software. And thus, you know, you get what you pay for. But fortunately, what we need is located directly on this page. Uh, and what we're interested in today is to download R so we can install it for the first time. So there's a couple places we can go here. Both of these will bring us to the same place. I'm gonna go ahead and to click on the to download R link. Now, if this is the first time you're ever downloading this software, uh, this page right here might throw you for a loop. Normally we're used to perhaps an uh, automatic download starting uh, or something of that nature. But here, what we're looking at is a page that has all of the CRAN or Comprehensive R Archive Network mirrors. So basically all of the R code is sent to all of these different uh, servers around the world and you have your choice of which one you down to download from. Now my suggestion is you pick one that's geographically close to you. Uh, because I'm here at Iowa State, I'm going to go ahead and choose the mirror that's located here at Iowa State. No matter what mirror you chose, you should be seeing this page. Now the next step is to uh, choose the appropriate link for your operating system. As I mentioned previously, R can be installed on Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems. If you have a Linux operating system, then I pretty much assume you know what you're doing. You're probably using a package manager and you can get R from that package manager. And so I'm not gonna go through at all what's happening on a Linux machine. Uh, I'm going to show you what happens on a Mac, but just briefly, I wanna click on the R for Windows link um, if you do have a Windows-based system, then what you'll see is a page that looks like this, and you'll see this nice handy sentence right here that says, this is what you want to install R for the first time. So go ahead and click on the base link if you're on a Windows system to install R. Now here on a Macintosh that we're using today, we have a couple of different options that primarily have to do with what version of the operating system you're running and what hardware you have. Mac has recently, or Apple the company, has recently started making their Macs using their own M1 chip. And it, when we're using our own M1 chip, then we have to choose a different uh, download here than if we're using an Intel-based chip. And so you should be aware of your system and what uh, it's actually using. If you're not, you can go up to the Apple and say about this Mac, and it'll tell you right here, my chip is an Apple M1, so I'm gonna click on M1 chip. If yours says something about Intel, then you wanna choose this link right here. And you can tell right here, it says Intel 64-bit build or the Apple Silicon ARM 64, which is what I have, that M1 chip. Uh, if you have an older system, uh, you might have a 32-bit system, you can go down below, I believe, and find a 32-bit uh, version of the application. But most people will want one of these two, uh, with the newer Macs being this second one down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and download the installer for R. It will only take a couple of seconds, uh, obviously depending on your internet speed and how close you are to the server. Um, but here we go, one second left, and now that is downloaded on my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and install uh, this, uh, install R on my Mac. And basically I'm just going to choose all the defaults here. So click, OK, agree. Uh, yeah, what disk it's going to install on and then it will install, and here I have to type in my password in order to get it to install. All right, and this process should only take, uh, I mean, depending on your system, 
uh, here it only took a couple of seconds and that's pretty typical for uh, the installation of R. So you can go ahead and close and in this case I'm going to trash the installer uh, and now we've installed R. Now when you install R, you will have access to the R default graphical user interface. The default graphical user interface will look something like this. Um, the main window that will pop open is the R console, and this is really where everything happens in R. So as an example, adding 1 plus 1, you get 2. Isn't that exciting? Now as you get and develop your uh, process in R, you will most likely be working with an R script. So here's an example of opening up an R script, and you can see that uh, we have a document now here that we can type in, but this document is a bit special in that it's intended for R code, and you can even run code directly out of here into the R console. Now, um, we also have additional windows that might pop open. For example, do right here is a histogram that we constructed in R. And now you see that all these windows are sort of separate and there is a, a default option available. When you are um, installing R, where we could have made this all one window, I believe. It's been so long since I've done it, I'm not 100% sure. But nonetheless, we, uh, you can see this is generally how you would operate with the default graphical user interface for R. But I personally think that the R Studio in interface or graphical user interface is a much improved version of this GUI. So we'll go ahead and install our studio and show you what that looks like. Now we've installed R, which provides the base functionality for everything that we need to use with R. But we're interested in downloading an improved graphical user interface. I'm going to refer to that as R Studio. But in reality, R Studio refers to a number of different things. First, it refers to a company that's called R Studio. Second, it's going to refer to the desktop application that we are going to use, but there's also other applications that may be of interest to you when you get to be more sophisticated in R. In order to download RStudio or the RStudio desktop application, uh, I think the easiest thing to do is to search for RStudio download, and most likely the first link that comes up is going to be the relevant one. It's the rstudio.com, the company, slash products, slash rstudio, slash download. And when you get here, there are a number of different uh, software that you could download. Uh, certainly we're interested in one of the two that are free. Uh, and you can see that there's an rstudio desktop and an rstudio server. If you're just getting started with R, undoubtedly the one that you want is the desktop environment. As you get more sophisticated with uh, R and you want to perhaps create an interactive website, then maybe you are interested in setting up your own R Studio server and providing that functionality to, say, clients. All right, so right now, though, uh, we're going to download the R Studio desktop. It automatically detects my operating system as it should do with yours. If it doesn't for some reason, right, you can choose one of the uh, installers below. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the download R Studio for Mac link that's going to. Uh, download the desktop application that's going to provide us that improved interface to the R statistical environment. I will note right now that you do need both. You cannot just install the R Studio desktop that doesn't come with the R software. Okay, so you need to install R and the R Studio desktop application. All right, now this should be installed just like any other software on your computer. Here on my Mac, we're just going to go ahead and drag the R Studio application into the Applications folder. And I already had a previous version installed on this computer, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace it with the updated application. All right, and so now on a Mac, I'm just going to load up my R Studio application, which it should ask me for the first time, say, hey, this was downloaded. Are you sure you want to open up? I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I'm ready to open the RStudio application. Now, when you open up RStudio, you will find a screen that looks vaguely familiar to what you found with the R GUI itself. Uh, you will find a console window. You'll notice here that the tab appears states console. And if you do the magic, one plus one equals two, uh, you get a similar result. Now, uh, when you are working with the script, like we opened up in the uh, R GUI, 
you can just start a new script right here and you'll see now that we have a little bit more organization to our windows than we had with the our GUI uh, in terms of them all being captured within an overall window but again that's one of these uh, R defaults that you could have set. Nonetheless you can go ahead and write um, code up in the R script and you can run it directly from that R script just like you did with the R GUI. If you were to construct uh, a plot, uh, you would have, as long as you typed it correctly, uh, the plot would show up down in the bottom right hand corner um, by default. And you can now see that there are a bunch of other tabs down here. So one that talks about files, uh, packages, we'll talk about packages in a bit, uh, the help system, uh, in this case, that help file is not right there right now, but uh, and you can see another uh, piece up here that provides you some more control, perhaps, uh, over your ecosystem of developing R code. Uh, in addition, RStudio provides a nice feature called projects. This allows you to switch back and forth very quickly amongst different projects that you might be working on. I use this quite a bit to work on uh, my classes and my research and so forth. All right, uh, stick around. In a bit, I will talk about uh, some settings that I typically do every time I load up uh, R or I download and install R for the first time. Now, there are a couple of things that I do every time I install R Studio and R on a new computer. The first thing is that um, there's a really terrible default uh, in both R and R Studio. Um, that really confuses first time users. And so I go ahead and change that default. And the default here you get access to in our, our studio by going to tools, global options. And then right here, there is um, an option here for the workspace. And mine has already been changed. But if you look at yours, if this is the first time you're installing R, then you will see something slightly different here. And it, typically what you see as a default is that go ahead and restore our data into workspace at startup is selected. And this I think is typically set at ask. And so I would highly recommend that the first thing you do is you change these two. Uh, in particular, getting rid of this restore our data into workspace at startup. And the second thing I do here is I say never. But I really it's the first one of those two that I would very much encourage you to get rid of. And basically what is happening is that when you run an R session, so you're doing whatever work you're doing, and then you close uh, R Studio or R down, um, here, if you save the workspace, the R data, and then you have this selected right here, the next time you start up R, you leave off, you come back right where you left off before. And now that might sound really appealing, um, but I've had many experiences with students where um, they weren't really expecting or they didn't remember where they left off and so they were expecting a different state of affairs when they started R and so they were getting something that they weren't expecting and it was throwing off everything that they were doing. And so I would just suggest until you know what you're doing, uh, I would go ahead and unselect the first one and then if you want, uh, just say never here. That avoids a question that R Studio is going to ask you when you close it down every time or R for that matter. Okay, so that's change number one. Uh, change number two that I typically make is I'm not a huge fan of this white uh, layout or white uh, appearance, let's say. And so what I tend to do is I tend to change this. Uh, in particular these days, I like the vibrant ink. Uh, and so if you do the vibrant ink, then you get a nice sort of uh, dark uh, background for our studio. Uh, the last thing that I do when I start up uh, R or when I install R for the first time, whether this is R Studio or Base R, is that I go ahead and install a package that I use all the time in my work. And so I at least want to show you how you install packages. This installation process only needs to be done one time for every time that you um, install R or upgrade R. And once you've done it once, then you are all set uh, until you upgrade R. So th there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, my preferred way is to type install.packages and then I give the package name that I'm interested in. And the package that I'm particularly interested in that I use all the time is the tidyverse package. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Uh, otherwise, you can go up here to tools and install packages. Uh, and you then would type the package that you want to install. They're basically uh, equivalent. 
uh, except for perhaps what repository things are coming from, but that's really not that important to you. So I'm going to install that package as Tidyverse. Um, if it asks you for a location for where to install this package, um, then you want to um, choose a mirror again that's close to you, just like we did when installing R. This question down here has to do with uh, whether you want to compile the package from source or not. I typically say just say no because things go much quicker. So I'll go ahead and say no. And now we can see R going through the process of installing this tidyverse package as well as all of the dependencies for that package. And in fact, the tidyverse package is really just a wrapper around a whole collection of packages that I use all the time when doing data analyses, when reading data in, when creating uh, uh, graphics. So there we go. We have now installed this tidyverse package. And we have access to all of those packages that provide that extra functionality beyond what that base R did. In this series, I'm hoping to show you a bit about how to work with R, and get some of the basics down so that you can start doing exactly what you want to do creating those uh, beautiful graphics, uh, building interactive websites, doing crazy sophisticated statistical analyses. They're all at your fingertips. You just need to get a base understanding of how to work with R before you get started. Until next time.